I'll put you on. I was watching these two pigeons on a gum-stained Brooklyn pavement, poking at the same breadcrumb, continuously pecking it out of each other's mouths, the competition of it. It made me think of you, of us. I, I could swear that these pigeons were lovers. I it's not as if they didn't see the other breadcrumbs scattered on the sidewalk. They both knew that there were more breadcrumbs, a whole loaf's worth of them, sprinkled on the pavement like confetti, meant to celebrate our excess, our desire to make flying things land at our command to be the hand that feeds, the species that matters. There were breadcrumbs scattered everywhere. Enough to leave a trail all the way along Nostrand Avenue, but for these two lovebirds, there was only this one crumb. They were fixated on it. It might have been that it was pumpernickel or, or, or poppy seed, maybe even sesame, or that it was the crumbled flake of a stale croissant. But I suspect, I suspect that it didn't really have anything to do with the bread itself. Nothing to do with taste or, or preference, nothing to do with surviving. This hasn't got anything to do with hunger, but it certainly has something to do with survival and with being hungry. It is competition. No, not a competition, but just competition. No, not Darwinism, just Darwinian-ish. Yes, biology, but not in the mechanical sense. I watched this, this timeless dance, this free-formed, feather-flapping, frantic ceremony of flirtation, the pheromonal <coughs> fidgetiness of it all, and I couldn't help but think of us. These things uh, always start off playfully ambiguous, are always kneaded by hands with chewed up cuticles. They, they follow a certain recipe of hope throat, of, of preheated love making, of undercooked dirty toothpick litmus tests, of yeasted sexual tension, of salt pinch secrets. We have been waiting for a ding, for a quartet of zeros singing in the place of a fat lady to tell us we were ready or finished or in need of being checked again to prevent getting burnt or just so we could slide our toothpicks back in there again to feel how warm <laughs> and moist it was, and it was. It was really warm and really moist, and we even referred to it as cake sometimes. And would devour all but a single crumb of it just so we could peck at each other a little bit more. You wayward whisk, you congenial clump of brown sugared beauty, my sweet tooth, candy coated chocolate kiss. Remember, remember how I used to melt you right out of your foil wrapper? How you stroked my ego with your voice box. How I, how I swore I could hear the ocean when I pressed my ears against your inner thighs. And you said, you said that I was really just hearing the blood circulating through my own head. And I would have agreed with you. I really would have. But I, I, I knew where all my blood was circulating at the time. And, and, and we used to origami our bodies. Frolicking fondly in the frenetic fondling of folded foreplay. Such a delicate art. How we used to crosshatch our eyelashes. How you'd run the tips of your painted fingernails in looping curls along my upper back. How I'd exhale tongue-tipped shivers through your ear canal down the slope of your spine until you shuddered as if your entire body was an eager bottom lip. The other day, I swear, I smelt your breath on a crowded four train during rush hour. <laughs> it is amazing what the senses can remember and what they can't. I've forgotten what your voice sounds like. I was, I was trying so hard to remember it, even the slightest cadence of its tone, oh, when I was sitting there, watching these two pigeons fighting over a single breadcrumb when that breadcrumb fell into a crease between two sidewalk slabs and the pigeons, they tried to peck it out, but it was simply out of reach, so they both took flight in opposite directions, and I sat there watching them, marveling at their ability to, like, move on. Yeah. <laughs>